Hi there. Thank you so much for joining me. This is Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. And in today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this super cute little gift box that perfectly holds a hand sanitizer from Bath & Body Works. I'd love to give credit to fellow U.S. demonstrator Phyllis Shepard for this idea for the box. And it's really quick and easy to make using the envelope punch board. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with a square piece of garden green cardstock that measures five and a quarter by five and a quarter. And I'm going to pull out the scoring tool from the envelope punch board. And we're first going to line up this left edge at one and a half inches. And you'll see that along the ruler lines here. So one and a half, punch and score. Then we're going to slide it down to the left to two and seven eighths, punch and score. And those are the only two measurements you have to remember for the envelope punch board. Now we're going to rotate this counterclockwise and I'm just going to line up the score lines with this little pointer tool here. I believe it's called the score guide. And we're just going to follow those score lines all the way around the box to punch and score the remaining three sides. Now once that's complete, we're going to round on the points of these two narrow sections at the top and the bottom, just using this reverse punch. And then we're done with the envelope punch board. So first go ahead and fold and burnish on all the score lines. All right, and next what we're going to do is if you were to fold this box together, you'll see that these points are just a little bit too long. So we're just going to trim them away. And the quick and easiest way to do that is I'm going to fold from the left on the second score line, fold to the back on the first score line on the right side. And you'll see that's about how much that we need to remove. So I'm just going to flip it over here so I can see right where I need to cut. I'm going to grab my paper snips and just trim that off. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing. Let me rotate it this way. So folding on the second score line from the left, we'll fold this little guy back and then trim off this little excess here. You can also measure this as well, but this is a quick and easy way to do that. All right, now the next thing we're going to do, let me bring in the template. So we rounded those points. We cut away that little excess here. Now we're going to make four little cut marks and you'll see where the line is thicker. We're going to create the tabs for this box. So I'm just going to cut vertically up to that first horizontal score line in each of these four sections. All right, so now that is done, we've kind of created these little tabs here, just like the template. And now we're going to start to put together our box. Now because we created this box with the envelope punch board, it's going to go together a little bit differently than a normal box does. There are a number of different ways to do this, but one thing that I like to do is to make sure that this box gets squared up correctly. And the easiest way to do that is what we're going to do next. So I'm going to go ahead again and fold from the second score line on the left and the first score line from the right. And you'll see where those are going to overlap. Just hold that up close to the camera. So what I'm going to do is just take a pencil and this is going to help me figure out where I can put my adhesive. I'm just going to go ahead and make little pencil marks and it's okay that we're making pencil marks here. They're going to get covered by the designer series paper. So I hope you can see that. I've got these two pencil lines and that means that I can put glue inside of there to put this box together. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to grab some liquid multi-purpose glue and place that within that little, it's almost like a diamond shaped section there. All right, and then I can just fold over from the first score line on the right to square those up. And essentially what we're doing is using our score lines to help this box be as square as possible. Just a little trick there. And again, it's a little bit of a different way to put a box together but we know now that that's going to be square. Now what I'm going to do next, and this again is going to be different, and there's a number of different ways to do it as well, but I'm just going to go ahead and put adhesive on these two tabs, 
and we're gonna fold this up and actually we can glue this flap on the outside of the box. You can certainly tuck it in to glue it, but with the glue, that'll get a little messy and since we're gonna hide it, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it this way. So a little bit of glue here on each of these tabs. I'm gonna do that first, just kind of fold this up here. And while I do that, I'm just going to take, and it's better to do this with the lid on your glue, but I'm just going to take my multi-purpose glue bottle, place that on the inside here to press that into place. All right, and then the last thing we're going to do is go ahead and put some glue on this little tab here. And press that into place as well and it actually is easier if we grab our hand sanitizer go ahead and put that inside and then we can press from the outside just to get that to glue into place so again just a different way to put it together there are other alternatives but I thought I'd show you some tips and tricks okay so now what we're gonna do I'm gonna leave the hand sanitizer in there I'm gonna go ahead and close this box for now such a cute little box and I'm gonna grab a piece of the coffee break designer series paper I love this early espresso pattern here this measures two and three quarters by six inches and I am just going to wrap this around the box okay you'll see there be a little bit of the green peeking through and I'm going to just start to fold around those corners. And as I do that, I'm just pinching and kind of creasing it just so I can see where uh, the corners are. Do the same thing all the way around. And this doesn't have to be perfect. You want it to be a little bit snug. All right, so I've kind of marked where those corners are and now what I can do is just fold on those lines and burnish and I'm just going to square that up as best I can. All right now that we've done that I'm going to line the edges here with tear and tape and this is on the inside of the designer series paper. I'm just going to run that right along the edge All right, so now you want to make sure your paper's going up and down and that this is your open end of the box, so make sure you pay attention to that. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this around, and now what I'm going to do is one of these ends is going to stick to the box. And then the other end is going to stick to the designer series paper. And that's just gonna prevent it from sliding around on us. There we go, so we've got our little belly band wrapped around. And now the last thing I need to do is make sure that I put a little finger notch in here so that it's easy for us to get this open and get the hand sanitizer out. So I'm gonna take the hand sanitizer out. I'm gonna use the half inch circle punch and I'm gonna slide that right there. I'm gonna go down about halfway in that circle and then I'm going to go ahead and punch and that's going to give us this little finger notch that when we go ahead and put the box back together it's going to be easy for us to get that opened and closed. So now let's do a little bit of decoration. I've punched out a couple of circles. The first circle I used the one and a quarter inch circle punch out of Pear Pizzazz. The second circle is one inch out of Soft Sky. And then I cut out an oval of Whisper White from the Coffee Cups Framelits. There's this great oval shape that's gonna perfectly fit with the Thanks A Latte stamp set. And I'm gonna show you a little trick here with the Stamparatus. So I always like to try to make multiples of my projects. And when making multiples, it's much easier to cut a bunch of blanks from your dies and then stamp afterwards and the Stamparatus actually helps you do that. So what I did first was I had inked up the stamp, stamped it onto a piece of Whisper White, then I went to the Big Shot and I cut this out using the oval die and then brought the negative of that cut
cut out and brought it back to the stamp apparatus because I know now that based on where I stamped it, if I put a blank in here, okay, then I'm going to ink up my stamp with garden green. And then when I stamp it, I know that it's going to go right where I want it to go. Now it's going to probably stick to the stamp. But voila, look at that. It's going to stamp right where I need it to stamp. So that's a little trick for you. It will make it easy to do a whole bunch of multiples of stamping. It would take longer to stamp, 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 and then cut, 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 because you're going to have to line up each cut in that oval. So just a little trick for you. I love the stamp apparatus. This will be available for purchase starting June 1st. Okay, now I'm going to layer together all my pieces using the liquid multipurpose glue. Then we're going to pop that on the front of our cute little gift box with a Stampin' Dimensional. And then I'm going to grab about an 8 inch piece of our Soft Sky Classic Weave Ribbon and I'm just going to do a little bunny ears bow here. And I'll grab three glue dots, one behind the knot, one behind each bow loop. And then we'll stick that on the front of our box. And there we have it, a super cute little gift box for a hand sanitizer from Bath & Body Works. So cute. I love this. It would be a cute little pick-me-up for someone or a thank you, great for a party favor whole bunch of different ideas. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next video. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Stampin' Up! products I used today, they'll be linked in the description. And I'll also include a link to my detailed blog post with all project details and measurements, as well as a picture of my handy template. I'd love to have you come visit me at thepaperpixie.com where I post projects every weekday to inspire you. I have options to subscribe to my daily blog updates as well as my monthly newsletter and I'd love to welcome you as a new subscriber. You can shop with me anytime at thepaperpixie.com shop and if you're interested in earning a discount on all of your Stampin' Up! purchases, I'd love to have you join my team of Paper Pixies and you can purchase the $99 starter kit at thepaperpixie.com join. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care. Bye.